We'll now go back to exploring other features about the contribution made by the diffracted beam to the image. If we just look at the fine detail here, I close down, it's quite obvious that the zero order alone with no diffracted beams gives us no resolution. I could do a silly experiment if I open up the iris diaphragm and quite simply take the slide off the stage. We have a zero order and at the bottom we have no detail as you would obviously expect with no specimen on the stage. Put the specimen in, the diffractor beams come back and the detail in the image comes back. So there does seem to be some kind of a link between the presence of diffracted beams and the presence of lines in the image. How many of these beams do we need? You can see here that we've got the zero order, the first on the left and the first on the right, and the beginnings of the second order on the left and the right. And if I pull the iris out, in fact, you see we've completely got the second orders. Do we need all of these? Clearly we need some diffracted beams, but do we need the full set? Let me close down the diaphragm like this and move it over so that we're just including one diffracted beam. Well, we don't resolve. Let's move across to include two diffracted beams. Now we do resolve, we can count the numbers of lines there, we can see what their frequency is. I know the image looks a bit funny, we'll come back to that in a minute, but we are at least resolving with two beams. And here we're resolving reasonably normally with two beams, the zero order and the first. The idea here is that the final image results from the interference between the various beams which make it up and they can be the zero order and the first order beam. They can be two diffracted beams, the first and the second, or they could be other pairs of beams, um, except that my equipment won't allow me to show you that. Or, of course, more normally, it will be as many of the diffracted beams that the aperture of the objective allows to pass through, and as we could see later, the more beams the better in terms of fidelity of the image. But with regard simply to being able to tell in the final image the frequency and spacings of the features in the object, then we need two beams just, either the zero order and the first order or the first order and the second order. We see a hint at the least that the final image is due to interference. Um, I think that you should be able to see that from the fact that we need two beams. One beam can't interfere with itself but two beams can and when you have two beams present then you do see the resolution in the final image.